Hi everyone, I'm Professor Malus Peters and in this playlist and introduction to bioreactors I'll talk about some important concepts in the pharmaceutical industry. And in this particular video I'm going to give a very brief overview on quality assurance and compliance. Quality assurance and compliance are two different concepts. First of all, uh, when it comes to quality assurance we need to make sure that the product that's being released meets the predetermined standard of quality and safety before it reaches the customers. And this is where it's different from the standard type of product that's produced in the chemical industry. Because in there, usually there's no delay between producing your product and releasing it. And as you can imagine, if there's something off on the quality of a pharmaceutical, this has far more impact uh, than if you have a batch of, let's say, biodiesel or something else, which is slightly off. And a delay of the release obviously interferes with profits. So what mostly happens in the pharmaceutical industry, they work by a concept that we call quality by design. So this is a way where you actually have this inbuilt quality control, so you minimize the period of that release. So I have a separate video on quality by design, so feel free to have a look at that and explain how it can control the quality of products by looking at certain critical uh, quality attributes and critical process parameters. When it comes to compliance, that means that you need to comply with the regulations that are in place. And obviously this will depend on, on the, the country uh, where this is being produced because they will have slightly different standards. However, in general, uh, they will need to adhere to what they call good manufacturing practice or good clinical practice when it comes to clinical trials. And in most of the cases, people refer to CGMP, so that means current good manufacturing practice. And actually what this implies, uh, because most of these mean that you have to continuously start to improve things, is that companies use state-of-the-art technologies and techniques in order to assure that they comply to these regulations. Um, you can have a look at the link below, uh, which refers to a conference where these guidelines were harmonized. And there was a comprehensive model uh, put together that looked at an effective pharmaceutical quality system. So let's look at the five, or sometimes you also call it the six P's of good manufacturing uh, practice. The final P is actually the proof that you comply with the GMP, and this is necessary in order to get your license. And again, this kind of depends on country where the manufacturer is based on. But generally the five P's, you have the products, which is central. Uh, then you have people, premises, processes, and procedures, or sometimes also called paperwork. So with the products, it starts with the raw material, so with the supplier that you start from, so you need to control this as well, all the way down till your product is finished. So even the packaging, for instance, becomes very important here. And then you need to make sure that all the methods you are using are repeatable, so whether that's how you record it, whether it's how you test it, and it's also how you manufacture it. But around the products, there are other things that come in, such as, for instance, the people that you're working with. So when it comes to the people, you need to make sure that they have clear and defined responsibilities, that they follow the procedures, but also that they've received the training so they actually are aware of what the procedures are. When it comes to the, the processes, you need to know what the critical steps are, you need to make sure that it's repeatable, and you also need to have controls in place for when you need to implement changes. When we talk about premises and equipment, you need to make sure that all of these are regularly calibrated and that they are maintained very well. So they need to be checked every now and then. They need to be designed so that they can easily be cleaned because you want to avoid cross contamination, which can have serious safety implications. And finally, when it comes to the procedures, or as I mentioned, the paperwork, not necessarily the nicest step, but you do need to make sure that everything is properly documented so you can repeat things. And then finally, if something does go wrong, you need to be able to investigate what happened and have a paper trail. And if you do want to know more about it in the links below, you can find some more information on the guidelines by the World Health Organization. So this slide is just briefly going to give you some best practice to follow when you want to ensure quality. And when it's quality, we need to consider the whole product. So in essence, we have the active pharmaceutical ingredient or API. And even though that's obviously the thing that makes sure that the pharmaceutical is working, often this is only a very small component of the overall thing. Um, so there are many other excipients that can be used. So for instance, to guarantee stability or sterility. Uh, and finally, we want to make sure that there's no contaminants whatsoever. 
so you need to look across the board. The first thing to start with is your raw materials. You need to thoroughly review the batch release specifications of what is coming from the supplier. Then you need to check whether this is in place with uh, GMP compliance. In this case here, it looks at CGMP, so what I mentioned is current GMP. In this process, you need to ensure that you always strive for continuous improvement. And actually, if you look at the video on quality by design, where I describe this, this continuous improvement is a top line strategy. In order to produce products with high quality and high safety, you need to ensure that the whole process is thoroughly followed, documented, and regularly controlled, because excellence in itself is a process. And then finally, you need to look at testing the API effectiveness, but also the safety of the overall product. And that means here you need to consider the excipients and the contaminants, which I previously described. Now, in order to achieve uh, this, so to test the safety of the API in the product itself, there's a range of methods you can look at. And in this video on sensors for bioreactors, I talk about some of the commonly employed analytical techniques. For instance, if you're working with, with tablets or powders, you might want to consider non-destructive tubes, uh, because this way they, they are typically rapid and low cost, so you can have very high throughput and you can analyze quality control that way. So for instance, infrared spectroscopy and Raman spectroscopy, uh, you can very easily, by fingerprinting the spectrum, figure out the API and how much you've got in there. You can employ something like microscopy in case there are some physical contaminants or some other particulates perhaps, um, and then we want to match the compound with a library uh, to what we have, for instance, in mass spec techniques or gas chromatography. However, the disadvantage of that approach compared to IR and Raman is that these are destructive tubes. So it means that you can't very routinely do this. Then the safety is equally as important. We need to see whether the product was processed in sterile conditions. So we need to do microbiological testing in order to make sure that nothing kind of remained behind and there was no contact with bacteria. Because we all know how many bacteria you've got on your hands, so for even, even simple handling of these pharmaceuticals can lead to contamination. And in the case where you're working with cell culturing, uh, there might be residual toxins or DNA from whatever cell culture you're working with that are left behind. And there's usually some standards for this and typical protocols that you need to adhere to. Particularly when you work with these non-destructive tools, so with IR and Raman, you can really have high throughput of your materials. And the problem with that is, is that you generate a lot of data. So you might need some computational modeling or artificial intelligence in order to make sense of this big data. Also consider that we're working with a very complicated product where we don't just have uh, the API, we have lots of other compounds in there. And for many of these analytical techniques, it can be very difficult to discriminate between um, your API and everything else in the system. And even more so when you look at things where, for instance, you have solvents or water. So what is very important for the next generation of chemical engineers that they will have received training in how to handle big data. Because nowadays we can measure almost everything. So we want to make sure that we actually draw the appropriate conclusions from the data. So this is a very short video on how uh, this quality assurance and compliance works. Uh, but do have a look at our videos on process analytical technologies, which are the sensors that are particularly used in this process, or quality by design, if you want to know more about the processing in the pharmaceutical industry. Thanks for watching.